Welcome back to another video uh, on Brocade. Um, we're going to be discussing some of our thoughts on the PlayStation Showcase today. There's a lot to unpack. Uh, we actually intend on recording our podcast around Monday, so that will be up the following Wednesday or Tuesday. We'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll unpack everything in more detail then when we have everybody here. So for now, we just wanted to talk about some of our thoughts on the initial things or really the biggest things that we're most excited about mainly god of war the wolverine game that's like that came completely out of left field and marvel spider-man 2 so uh yeah like i said we'll go into more detail with the podcast um but i guess i'll just come right out and say it i am super excited for god of war um yeah i guess anything you guys want to add real quick before i go on a rant <clears throat> so to be honest with you uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited uh, for this game, and um, since we know actually know now that this will be the cap the cap off for the Norse uh, set of God of War games, I definitely think it's gonna be pretty much an epic conclusion essentially. Because um, we know we know Freya and Thor are the the two uh, big main big bads, and uh, from what it sounds like, once Ragnarok happens. Uh, that's when Thor, uh, I mean, Odin himself is going to appear. So I honestly can't wait to see uh, that happen and uh, Kratos' interaction with him and how that plays out. Um, and I'm really, I, I also, I just can't really, I can't wait to see uh, what what Atreus and uh, Kratos' relationship uh, uh, go um, goes by the end of the game. Like, how do they turn out? Uh, by the end of the game, uh, because we saw how close they were uh, by the end of the first game, so I can't wait to see more of that father and son uh, between the two of them. Because it's kind of funny, like I was telling you guys earlier, where Kratos, um, you know, in the first game was all about be a warrior. Now he wants more than anything to protect his son. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because any other time, you know, he wants Atreus to be a warrior, but now. He wants to protect his son at no, at no matter the cost. So um, it's 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 a really interesting turn of events, and I think it's because it just shows how far Kratos has come as a father. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I yeah, I just can't wait to see. I just can't wait to see those dynamics play out even more. To be honest, like and yeah. just just like all the uh, populated cities and the new locations we get to go to. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm really excited, dude. I, I can't wait. Yeah. Yep. Um, I can, I can definitely, uh, piggyback off what Demetrius said. Um, so they gave a, or they released a, uh, blog post, um, and we're talking about some of the stuff. So we know now that you'll be able to actually explore all nine realms in this game versus the first one. You only had six. And I believe the ones, uh, they said they're adding now the other three, it's, uh, Vanaheim, Svartalheim and Asgard. So that's going to be really cool. Um, and one of the things that they touched on in the blog, uh, was that th this is going to be like the most varied, uh, diverse locations that you've really ever seen in any God of War game, which is going to be a lot of fun to explore. They talked about how they they really wanted to add more um, more player choice and, and kind of like a, like a freedom to the player. I guess the term would probably be like player agency um, to the player when in combat, like to have a lot more choice and stuff. And in the gameplay, we, we definitely saw some, some stuff like uh, the juggling looked a little bit cooler now. Uh, I swear, I think there was a, a few frames where we saw Kratos actually use the chain to like grapple to an area, which is yeah, really did. cool. Yeah. Like he that, did. that, that looks awesome. Um, Demetrius touched on the more populated areas. Like we literally see like a bustling, like trading hub with like this vendor guy. Um, he had like an octopus or something like that, or like a squid or something, I think in the, it was in the disgusting. um, yeah, it was pretty nasty. Um, which that, that's nice to see more populated areas. Cause I know that was a criticism we all kind of agreed on in the first game that, I mean, I, I made the analogy, uh, to the guys before that it almost reminded us of those cowboy movies when like the bandits come through town and everybody closes the shutters and hides in their home. It was, it was kind of like a little bit like that, not to be too harsh here, but it was just kind of weird. Like I wish there would have been more people. Um, and I know there were some because like there's that that uh, part where you kind of get like jumped by the people or whatever. But after after that, yeah, there the really wasn't a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever that group was. Um, another thing that's going to be nice because now that uh, Fimblewinter is in full swing, 
uh, there's they've said in the blog post that there's more enemy types, and that definitely rings true. It looks a lot more true to like classic God of God War. Of War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then then again, say another criticism of the original game was like they reused a lot of like trolls for the boss fight uh, or boss fights, and, and they're very much not God of War. Yeah, that's and fair. That's every... fair. I don't know. They've they the kind of reused the all... same enemy types too many times, so I'm uh, yeah. I'm real happy to see more uh, diversity here. It's also going to be really cool to have uh, Freya and Thor, given you know the end the end of the story in the first one, where Kratos kills Balder. We know Freya's pissed, and we know she's not to be messed with because when she was on our side or Kratos and Atreus' side, uh, she was a real good ally to have. So now that she's turned enemy, that's going to be interesting. Um, and same thing with Thor. I mean, we know Thor has a personal stake uh, here as well. Um, and there's actually a shot in the trailer too that we think is probably the beginning of the game. We're hoping is the opening to kind of mirror the Balder fight, but way more badass. Kind of like we touched on in the podcast this week. Um, it'd be really cool if that's the opening of the game where you kind of step outside and, and Thor's there. And they are out front of their house in that shot. So I do, I do think that's probably the opening. I'd be surprised um, if it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially, you know, to mirror the uh, fight with Balder. But this time it's going to be way more bombastic and over the top. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else we need to touch on real quick? I was going to say, uh, I should have known, well, yeah, that this was probably going to be the closer for the Norse. Because yeah, it's literally called God of War Ragnarok. I mean, yeah, if you, if you, you know, know, to be fair, yeah, yeah name yeah, yeah, if you know, yeah, if you know Ragnarok, yeah, that's literally of the Norse gods. Yeah, it's yeah, the end like, and oh, kind of the reset. That is yeah. true, but I always thought like this would kind yeah. of like that, like this the whole Ragnarok story. Now that we're finally getting here. I thought it would have been like a two part, and they do like a trilogy of the Norse stuff, and then I, that's actually think, what I had thought too. I think it was talked about, yes. but I'm wondering if maybe they kind of it changed their mind yeah, yeah maybe maybe they realized like just go all out with this one yeah. instead of stretch instead of kind of dragging yeah. your heels with two and then finally going all out with three you could just go all out with this one if it is indeed the last one in this like north set of games um so yeah. that, that's kind of cool i, I don't mm -hmm. hate that um oh also too one thing i should touch on as well with the i, I brought up the varied locations and stuff there was some kind of chariot in the gameplay and They've said um, that obviously there will be new locations, um, like like realms we haven't been to, of course, the other three. But on top of that, there will be new new areas to explore in the existing locations from the first game. So that's going to be cool to have yeah. it expanded. Um, and again, since Fimble Winter's kind of in full swing, we might see a new coat of paint, so to speak, on some existing areas that we we'd been to and stuff like that. So I'm uh, I'm super excited, and, and uh, we can touch on quickly too. I guess the the designs of the characters look really good as well. Like Kratos looks great, Atreus looks oh, yeah. great. And Thor, yep. Man, I, I couldn't be more happy with Thor's design as well. Uh, yeah. He looks very accurate. He, he looks very accurate to what um, a more historical Thor would look like. Yeah, yeah he's kind of so, fat. Yeah. Yeah. So and game uh, Thor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, more yeah. or less just minus the fat suit. And the thing is yeah. and the thing is the thing is that I'm thinking about is if like things already look this crazy and it's not even Ragnarok yet, imagine when that does happen, what's gonna like dude, yeah. it's gonna be bonkers. Yep. Like Oh yeah, it's gonna be nuts. Man. It's gonna be nuts. Also we know from <laughs> from, uh, from a story perspective, they they've also said as well that um Atreus is trying to figure out like his purpose and he kind of can't let yeah. that go given that you know the revelation in the end of the first game that he finds out he's Loki and and he wants to find his place and what that means in Ragnarok and he doesn't want to just sit idly by while the, like all the nine realms get destroyed he kind of feels like a personal stake in that um and then yeah. obviously given what Kratos because Kratos only saw that one bit of the tapestry where like he kind of dies and and whatever like Loki seems to or I guess Atreus slash Loki seems to play some type of a role although we don't exactly know what um it's going to be interesting because they seem to have kind of conflicting ideals here like there's a line in the trailer where and I'm paraphrasing but Atreus says something along the lines of um can you stop thinking so much like a father and think more like a general and kratos is like fuck no kid like you're my son i gotta protect you and also they touched on the blog post which we can tell anyways kratos doesn't want atreus to have to learn from his tough lessons the hard way like he'd rather i mean as the job of every parent like he'd rather teach him that before atreus has to learn it himself so there's gonna be a lot of interesting stuff here because you can tell they're a little bit at odds especially since atreus is getting a little bit older and he does feel such a personal stake in this so i think that's uh yeah. that's gonna be real interesting to see <clears throat> and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and the interesting dynamic with this one was because kratos wasn't a father you know in the first game the first game was about him teaching 
you know, Atreus how to be a warrior. It seems like this game, he's trying to teach Atreus how to be a man. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, it's trying like to be a little trying, smarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, so it, it's it's yeah. Not to say I that he wasn't that. a father, but I know what you mean. Like he yeah. he opens it yeah. as like kind of the he's not the best father. He doesn't really know how to do it, and, yeah. and the journey they go through again, like we touched on in the podcast, where they mm-hmm. end up is is really cool, and you can you can kind of see the next logical step um, for that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Um. All right, so I guess that's God of War Ragnarok. We should probably touch on uh, Wolverine. Uh, I don't oh, think man. any of us saw that coming. Although Josh and I well, did talk not too long ago about that. Like, I think it was probably a couple months ago. Where we were just kind of throwing yeah, ideas yeah. out of games yeah, that we would like of superheroes because him and I are big fans of Wolverine. Wolverine's one of my favorite Marvel heroes, aside from like Spider-Man uh, and probably Daredevil and, and stuff. So we were super surprised to see that. But... Um, again like pleasantly surprised like i think that game's gonna be a lot of fun it's also made by insomniac as well so and apparently it's and Brian Horton is directing it oh yeah yep the, yeah the creative director from miles morales so and and he's, mm-hmm. he's pretty damn good because we really liked miles oh, so yeah. um yeah we're really excited i mean obviously it was just a, it was just a short trailer you know it opens up with a bar i mean and we're assuming you guys have seen it but if you haven't just opens up with a bar and there's some western music playing and just like piles of people that got their ass kicked and, and Logan sitting at the bar. And then some guy, I guess the one guy that had enough left in him gets up thinking he's going to pull a blade on Wolverine. And it's going to work to, to, you know, in, in his favor anyways, dumbass, of course not. And then you see the claws come out for Wolverine and then it kind of cuts. So we're really excited. Um, and we're hoping actually that, um, maybe they kind of pull some stuff from the, uh, Wolverine X-Men origins game. Or sorry, X Men. Or you know, you know the one. You know the one. The movie tie-in game. Basically, I forget the exact title of it, but everybody's all maintained. The and just make it better. Yeah, every yeah. Game I mean, for mechanic. Every, every, well, maybe not every single one. Obviously, we want it to be its own thing. But that <laughs> that one is. Uh, no, obviously, add stuff to it. But like, yeah, that game is such a good base. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's highly regarded. From I actually have never played it, but it's highly regarded as one of the best, nice. or if not the best, Wolverine games. Not that we've had too many, but you know what I, I mean. I gotta so, put you on that game somehow. Um, I gotta find means. Yeah, to I'll, I'll have it. to try and try and get my hands on it somehow. Um, but yeah, so we're really excited. Can't wait to see more for that. Um, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun, and it might actually be a nice shift for Insomniac from all the gadget heavy stuff and. Uh, you know, maybe you have a little bit of a darker tone. We're actually kind of hoping it's M-rated. I, we'll have to wait and see. Um, it's, I mean, it's not like they haven't ever done M-rated with Resistance, so I kind of hope that they they do go that route. But um, but yeah, not not too much to say on that other than that was like a crazy surprise, and we were all kind of mind blown by that. But but very excited and can't wait to see more. Also, no release yeah. window on that either, so we're not sure if that's going to come. Um, and they, that's and, probably 2024. 2020. Yeah, big, we're not even sure. And a, and a big takeaway, a big takeaway, like I said for me. Um, is insomniac so with a lot of the games they've they announced are going full you know next gen on ps5 so yeah yep i think that's a big win that's a big win for me agreed so agreed. Uh, yep. I, i'm really excited about yep that. yep and I, I guess that would be a perfect point to segue into the last thing the heavy hitter uh i mean geez like this like what we've already discussed wasn't heavy hitting we actually got the reveal for marvel spider-man 2 and we actually saw more yep. than we thought um, the trailer opens mm-hmm. up with oh, way more than we thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. More than we expected. I, I mean, didn't even we... think we were gonna get it. Honestly, no, no. And, and again, not to thing. fucking overplug the podcast or beat a dead horse here, but even in the podcast, we said like we figured if we saw something, it'd be real small, and we actually did kind of get more than even we expected. So, um, yeah. Basically, it opens up with Craven talking. That's a huge one because Craven is a great Spider-Man villain. Um, you get to see more of Miles and Peter. Their costumes have been touched up a little bit um our our friend was actually pointing out that um it didn't say in engine so he was saying that that it, it might actually be like or they said sorry it didn't say uh it's captured it's like in engine footage it yeah it said footage, footage captured, captured on yeah, a ps5 mean. or whatever so basically like that's probably a cutscene, even if it's early uh which is which is pretty yeah. freaking crazy considering how good that looked um and then obviously not to uh beat around the the bush here the the most important part of it is we actually got the reveal of venom he sounds amazing he looks exactly how i'd hoped he would look and he's voiced by the original Candyman um actor what's his name tony todd Mm -hmm. i always forget his name um yeah so oh and and actually apparently he voiced uh zoom as well um on the flash wait he voiced zoom oh wow i didn't even yeah that actually that makes a lot of sense now so basically they're pulling out all the stops they got (laughs) the right guy 
um, for the tone. Also, the tone was was a little darker with that too. We we kind of like that. Which makes me happy. Yeah. Which makes me really happy. Yeah, because, because for Venom, it, it, it kind of yes, should be. And, and, the thing, and the thing is, right, we already had like the two, like because it's the first two games, you know, they they had some, you know, you know, some like like or, or Marvel Spider Man had like some some dark moments, and then you know Miles had his moments in that game, but this seems like the first Spider Man game where we're getting a dark tone. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, from them, from so, them. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yep. so it's, it's, and it's honestly, like, yeah, and like, <clears throat> I, I'm glad that like you brought that up, especially because like you know, like, for multiple reasons why I feel this way, but like, for one, like the way how they revealed Venom and the fact that Tony Todd is voicing him, like, you got like, he he he's he he's horror royalty for one, like as a horror fan, like that. I didn't even realize that, and that blew me away. That got me even more excited. Like you could ask the guys. Like I was, I, I was. I lost it when they told me that. Like, mm-hmm. like he's he's horror royalty. Like he he's just talented all across the board. Like he he's phenomenal. And like Agreed. the way how they revealed him reminded me a lot of the first Halloween when like Michael is coming out of the closet like very subtly and like you see his face creeping through him. Like bring back those horror like the horror elements of the character. We haven't seen that in years, and it sucks that the Venom movie could have capitalized on that and they haven't. Even they're trying to with Carnage with the body horror, but it's like it's PG thirteen. You can't really go all the way. So I'm yeah, like, I, I would argue. Like, I'm, I'm not <laughs> gonna shit on Venom or whatever. I mean, if you like it, you like it. But it, um, I don't, I don't necessarily like um the tone that Goofy Venom. They, they went I don't for. Like, like that. I liked Goofy Venom where it fit, like in the NeverSoft yeah, PS1 like the, game. Yeah, Goofy Venom was there, great yeah. because they kind of had to te- like him and Spidey kind of had to team up. So it didn't really bother me there, but I think and it was like based if it's, off of the cartoon as well. Yeah, and so if it but if it's if it's his first outing like in his own thing, which he, even that's controversial. Like he should be tied to Spider Man, but that's whatever. Neither here nor there. If that's how they're if they're going to say he's on his own right now, and eventually maybe we'll cross him over, maybe we won't. Whatever. I just think they they could have. It, it's not how I would have handled. It. I mean, not saying I'm a fucking writer or a director, but I can't sit here and be like I would do it better. But I just think like maybe they could have went for a better tone or something. That in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so that, that has me very excited for the game seeing, you know, he, he looks fucking terrifying. Um, and yeah, we're super excited. And I mean, he might kill Craven. We're not sure. Like that'd be kind of crazy, but I was saying to the guys earlier, like, what if that's actually the reveal? Like they have him actually just come out and be like, fuck you. And just like horror movie style, like kill Craven. And then it's like, that sets the tone for the game. Like, I mean, I don't think they have to kill him. Because, like, I'm sure we'd love to see Craven, like, we like this universe, but I do think that would be a very, like, oh, yeah. fuck moment. And I think that could be no, very, honestly, very um, interesting. Honestly, um, when, when Dell first brought that idea up to us, I was saying, what if what it is, is like, <laughs> like the way how the story is set up, because clearly these are the two main villains of the game. But what if what it is, is like, at, you know, at whatever point in the game it is, obviously it would be rather early on. Harry, you know, he, he finally gets out of, you know, the vet, and, you know, like, he feels all good, then all of a sudden, you know, the symbiote kicks in, and then he starts running amok, and there's just murmurings across the city on, like, from the bugle and everywhere else, oh, there's a creature running rampant, killing people. And we all, we're all thinking, oh, it's, you know, Spider-Man Craven comes into town for. No, that's not it. He's going in to look for this creature, because Craven's just like, oh, it's some mysterious creature that's just, like, tearing shit up, and he's taking people that could be cool like a cool reason that he ends up getting called yeah 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 and he winds up bumping into into both the spider-man and that's also like an additional like holy shit Mm -hmm. these guys i'm also going to try and take down as well and while they're fighting you know like what would be a really cool way to reveal venom and also like this could be after some time of you know dealing with craven you know like a good amount of time we're dealing with craven and you know you fight you fight craven you fucks off and then while you're going to like take care of other stuff and you come across him again halfway through the fight it's like just triggers a cutscene, and you're like okay what's going on here and you know like craven's giving his whole monologue we all know how craven is he 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 loves to talk he's like loki he loves to talk and while they're talking all of a sudden he's just impaled right through the chest like yeah. there's like a close yep. on his face and it's venom's tendril and it's just like just right through his chest and he's like just lifted up into the air he's like ah and it just that's just the reveal of Venom. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Just, yeah. Like that, that's what that I'm could saying. That'd be really just, hard hitting. And it'd be really oh cool. Oh my 
I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I could see people maybe being mad, you know, big or maybe being angry, like, longtime fans of Craven. That's why I guess, like, you had brought up that yeah. maybe if they give us some time with the character or whatever, but yeah, I, think I think that would, that would be, be pretty freaking crazy yeah. if Venom's reveal is killing a formidable foe like Craven. I mean, hell, Craven's the most iconic story is him killing himself at the end. So, I mean, like, I mean, him getting killed off wouldn't really be unheard of. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, oh, and that comes in 2023. So we know they're gonna they're kind of taking all their time <coughs> to, mm-hmm. to uh, polish that. And, and I mean, sure, I would love to get my hands on it sooner, but I say Insomniac, take all the time that you need. No, I'm glad We're it's coming excited. on 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take all the time you need. Don't rush that. Also, there's some other things I gotta say on the game. One of them is a big criticism that mean mean they are both sharing this, but. One thing I gotta say, the the costumes, I love them. My, my biggest criticism with the first game and going into Miles is that he didn't throw away the advanced suit after, you know, he found out what Otto was doing, you know? That was my biggest criticism. Or at least, you know, like, come with a new one, like, because I understand if you like how it looks and you want to tweak it. That, like, but they finally addressed it all. I felt like it took them too long, you know, with Peter, but I'm, I'm happy they just did it. But in Miles, I'm just like, that whole, like, going down the arm thing has just been a fan favorite, like, concept design for years. And the fact that we're finally getting it and something official is awesome. And it looks so good. And Miles' suit, like, it's fully, like, a dark, like, pitch black color. Now it's not, like, that blackish gray anymore. And Peter finally has a red suit. He's not orange. But my big criticism from what we got with the trailer. And these guys know I've been a really big detractor for this kind of take on Spider-Man. I never really liked it. They're going too far with the gadgets, in my opinion. Now, like, because I understand, like, you brought in Miles and you have to try to find a way to, you know, kind of tip the scales to make Peter a bit more interesting. But, like, and I like the I, I like the Iron Spider arms, like, as a suit power with, you know, like, the suit that, you know, it works for. But just having them have this and, like, it has, like, the lights and, like, all the weird, like, like, no. I'm with Dale. That I don't, I don't, I yeah, don't I, vibe with I, this. I basically brought up that. I'm not the biggest fan of the Iron Spider arms. Like I like it on the Iron Spider Spider suit, but I would have liked maybe in the opening to see more web-based stuff with Peter. Now this is just a this is just a personal taste thing. Like you know we're not saying like if you like it, great, more power to you. No pun intended. But yeah, I just um, I don't know seeing my, all Miles cool stuff. I I kind of would have preferred maybe a little bit more web-based things like because it kind of i kind of get the vibe that this is clearly something peter has made and incorporated into his suit now again it gameplay wise it's probably going to be a suit power if it is a suit power i personally won't use it so it's not like to to shit on it i just think it was a little jarring yeah. seeing that be like full front and center right in the first review i'll be for surprised it. if it's not a suit power i'll be surprised if it is i i hope it is because i mean we know they did that in the first game that way the player has the option and then me personally yeah. i won't use it a lot but hey if you guys like that like I said, more power to you. Not to tell you what you can and can't like or whatever, but we just it, 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 it would, honestly it would be it would be cool if you know he built in like you know web wings for for the suit. That's yeah. what they should have done instead of the, the stupid spider arms. They should have had the web wings. That that would have made more sense for Peter to have. Yeah, that I would probably be more in line with. You know, like seeing what yeah. that would look like than just focusing a lot on on the arms. But again, not not to overshadow it. We are super. Super, super excited. Yeah, we're, but we're just over the bring up a, the a, a little criticism. Especially Venom. He just looks like Ultimate Venom, and I love it. Yeah. Yep. Um, love it. But yeah, okay. I mean, I guess if everybody's kind of said uh, their piece, um, like I said, you'll have more to look forward to when we upload our podcast next week. So you can count on that um, being like the full the full discussion, so to speak. We just wanted to get some of our thoughts down uh, on video and and put them out there while this stuff was still hot so uh if you guys like the video please subscribe to the channel drop a like leave a comment that's actually something um i definitely want to mention what are your favorite suits what are some things that like for at least for spider-man that maybe some suits that weren't in the first game that you would like in the in the sequel same thing with wolverine if there's any like crazy costumes or anything like specific storylines you'd like to see them explore um you know be sure to let us know and uh with that being said we'll see you guys in the next one